watching Just the News. I'm Amrita Balachandra. Let's get straight to it. On to COVID updates now, especially Omicron. A consortium of 28 laboratories to monitor genomic variations in coronavirus has recommended the center uh, to consider COVID-19 booster dose for those who are 40 years and older. Uh, amid the threat of Omicron, which is a new variant of concern at this point that's been designated by the WHO. India, to remember, has detected two cases of Omicron in Karnataka. The uh, Indian SARS-CoV-2 Genomics Consortium, which is called the INSACOG, has said in a statement, and I quote, vaccination of all remaining unvaccinated at-risk people and consideration of a booster dose for those 40 years of age and above uh, first targeting the most high risk, high exposure may be considered uh, since low levels of neutralizing antibodies from current vaccines are unlikely to be sufficient to neutralize Omicron, though the uh, risk of severe disease is still likely to be uh, reduced, end quote. Insacog also said that preliminary evidence suggests that Omicron may increase reinfection risk which is expected from the structural changes due to uh, the mutations and the number of cases of its variant appears to be increasing in almost all provinces in South Africa where it was first detected. Now, the US and Britain have already cleared booster shots for some age groups, according to several reports. Meanwhile, here's what's Karnataka doing to tackle the two new cases of Omicron to ensure that it doesn't spread further. Uh, Karnataka has now released fresh rules that includes banning unvaccinated people from accessing certain facets of public life, such as parks, shopping malls, and cinema theatres. And the decisions were taken at a meeting chaired by Karnataka Chief Minister to discuss the government's action plan. And it was attended uh, by senior ministers, public health experts, and administration officials. Uh, they also have said that all gatherings, meetings, conferences, etc. should strictly limit the number of participants to 500 people. All cultural activities, fests and functions in all educational institutions are to be postponed till the 15th January 2022. In the meantime, 12 suspected cases of Omicron have been admitted to hospitals in Delhi after they arrived on international flights over the past three days. Now, their samples have been sent for genome testing to confirm whether they are infected with the Omicron variant. Uh, all are at the Lok uh, Nayak Jai Prakash Hospital in Delhi. Now, 28 samples from Maharashtra have also been sent for genome sequencing. In the meantime, there have been several reports that a 66-year-old uh, traveler from South Africa left India within seven days of testing positive by obtaining a negative COVID test report from a private lab. Now, after these reports, the Karnataka government has now directed civic officials in Bengaluru to register a police complaint and investigate the validity of that negative COVID test report provided to the traveler. Now, NDTV has reported that the state is now trying to track down 10 more people who reportedly went missing from the airport. State Revenue Minister R. Ashok has said on Friday, and I quote, we have issued directions to the Brihad Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike, or the BBMP, which is a civic body of Bengaluru, uh, commissioner to register a police complaint to investigate how the traveler from South Africa obtained a COVID-19 test report that allowed him to leave the country. Uh, by tonight, all 10 people who have reportedly gone missing should be traced and they should be tested. Travelers will not be allowed to leave the airport until their report is out, end quote. According to the Indian Express, the traveler who arrived in Bengaluru on the 20th of November tested positive at the airport and stayed at a five-star hotel in central Bengaluru. Now, on the 23rd of November, he, he purportedly obtained a negative COVID test report from a private lab, which allowed him to return to South Africa via Dubai on the 27th of November. November. Meanwhile, an update now on COVID cases in the country. India has reported 9,216 new COVID cases and 391 deaths in the last 24 hours. Also, the new South Africa's health minister has said the country is now being hit by a fourth wave of COVID infections driven by the Omicron variant. 
uh, which has been detected in seven of the country's nine provinces. Now, South Africa's top scientist, Michelle Rue, said that the infections were also moving from the younger age cohort into older people. Uh, it was important for surge preparedness to include pediatric beds and staff as there has been an increased admissions among children under four. Germany, in the meantime, on Thursday, has announced a nationwide lockdown for the unvaccinated. Unvaccinated people can only meet two people from another household. Now, bars and nightclubs should shut down in areas that are reporting 350 cases per 1 lakh people in one week. Germany is also planning to restrict the number of people attending large events and matches. Now, it's also planning to make vaccinations mandatory for the eligible population. This comes after Germany is witnessing a surge in COVID cases and the majority of them are unvaccinated citizens. An update now on what's going on in the winter session of the parliament. Members of the BJP staged a protest in the parliament against the unruly behaviour of the opposition party leaders in the ongoing winter session. Now, the MP staged a protest at the same site where leaders from the opposition were holding a protest against the suspension of 12 Rajya Sabha members. Now, while uh, reacting to uh, the BJP's protest, Congress MP Sashi Tharoor has said, and I quote, it was needlessly provocative of the BJP MPs to come here and rub salt in the wounds. If anything, the BJP should have shown solidarity. My colleagues were unjustly expelled by a party that has institutionalized disruption, end quote. Now, a day after the Supreme Court slammed center and the Delhi government over the deteriorating air pollution in Delhi, the center has now set up an enforcement task force to curb pollution. Now, the government informed the Supreme Court that flying squads have also been formed and have started functioning from the 2nd of December. The flying squads have started conducting surprise checks at 25 sites. There will also be a total of 40 uh, flying, uh, flying squads. In an affidavit, the center said that only five out of the 11 thermal pl uh, power plants situated within 300 kilometers of Delhi will remain operational till at least the 15th of December 2021. Industrial units or in NCR, which, not, which are not running on PNG or on cleaner fu uh, fuels, shall be uh, allowed to operate for only up to eight hours a day uh, during weekdays and will remain closed on weekends. Earlier, the Supreme Court had ordered schools to remain shut till further notice. Now, the Supreme Court also said that it has it has been portrayed as villains by some sections of the media for prompting the closure of schools on account of the air pollution in Delhi. Remember, uh, the air quality in Delhi has been uh, in the very poor category now for the last one month. In the meantime, the Supreme Court on Friday also permitted the Delhi government to continue the construction activities of 19 government hospitals. Now, the construction of Central Vista uh, is also ongoing as the centre has deemed it of national importance. Now, while hearing the case on Delhi pollution, senior counsel Ranjit Kumar, who was appearing on behalf of the Uttar Pradesh uh, government, has said that the air quality air is mostly coming out of Pakistan. He went on to say that the closure of industries in UP might not alleviate the uh, pollution problem, but could impact sugarcane industries in the state. To this, Chief Justice of India responded, and I quote, so you want to ban industries in Pakistan? End quote. The court was hearing a petition by a 17-year-old Delhi student concerning rising levels of air pollution in the national capital. The next hearing is on the 10th of December. The Haryana government, in the meantime, on Friday, has issued an order to shut schools in Gurugram, Sonipat, uh, Faridabad, and Jharjhat until further orders in view of deteriorating air quality in Delhi. The government also banned construction activities in all 14 NCR districts of Haryana. Now, non-polluting activities like plumbing work, in interior decoration, uh, electrical work and carpentry will, however, be exempt. 
Also, the news the Supreme Court uh, today observed that differently abled persons with prosthetic limbs or calipers should not be asked to remove the prosthetics at airport security checks to maintain human dignity. Now, the Supreme Court said that lifting a person with disability during air travel or security checkup is inhumane and held that the same should not be done without the person's consent. Now, a bench comprising Justice Heman Gupta and Justice B. Rama Subramaniam was hearing a 2012 petition filed by Jija Ghosh, a disability rights activist who was forcibly deboarded from a spice jet flight due to her disability. Now, in 2016, the Supreme Court had directed SpiceJet to pay 10 lakh rupees as compensation to Ghosh for violating her right to dignity. Moving on now, according to the IMD, a low pressure system of the Bay of Bengal has intensified into cyclonic storm Javad. Now, it is expected to make landfall near Puri coast in Odisha around noon on the 5th of December. A red alert has been issued for uh, Gajapati, Ganjam, Puri uh, and other districts of Odisha. IMD also predicted light to very heavy rainfall at several places in Odisha. Andhra Pradesh and West Bengal from Friday. Or to business news right now, in a panel discussion organized by Infinity Forum, Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman said that regulating cryptocurrency will have to be at a collective effort. Now she said, and I quote, even as we are thinking at a national level, there should simultaneously be a global mechanism through which we are constantly monitoring the movement of technology. So whether it is your cryptocurrency, whether it is your technology-driven payment system, whether it is data privacy, whether it is ensuring that data itself is used ethically, regulating it will have to be a collective effort, end quote. Nirmala Sitaraman also went on to say, uh, and I quote, the regulation, both executive and legislative, is only catching up with technology. They can never be on top of it because the technology is constantly evolving and changing. And news coming in from across the world right now, U.S. State Secretary Antony Blinken has warned Russia that there would be serious consequences if it invades Ukraine. Now, Blinken dis uh, delivered the warning to the Russian foreign minister at what he called a candid meeting in Sweden. Now, Antony Blinken told a news conference after the meeting, and I quote, I made very clear our deep concerns and our resolve to hold Russia responsible for its actions, including our commitment to work with European allies to impose severe costs and consequences on Russia if it takes further aggressive action against Ukraine. It is now on Russia to de-escalate the current tensions by reversing the recent troop buildup, returning forces to normal peacetime positions, and refraining from further intimidation and attempts to destabilize Ukraine, end quote. And one piece of good news before we wrap up this bulletin, Kerala's Shruti Satara has been crowned as the Miss Trans Global Universe. Now, she was also crowned as the most eloquent queen at the pageant. Now, Miss Trans Global from the Philippines and Canada secured the first runner-up and the second runner-up places. Shruti had started an online campaign called The Kaleidoscope with her friends to normalize the rights of the LGBTQIA plus community and create public awareness and acceptance towards queer relationships as well. That's it here on Just News. Thank you so much for watching.